Welcome to another Feed Scroll Generator tutorial for Autodesk Inventor. This time we're taking a look at how you can create a double shaft feed screw. We're going to look at a fully worked example here which is the one that we see in front of us. If you look closely you can see that the bottles are actually alternating their rotation direction. So one bottle is rotating clockwise and the next bottle after it is rotating anti-clockwise and this movement is still being controlled by both shafts which if we look carefully here we can see that they're not actually a mirror copy of each other they are completely independent shapes really and so you might be fooled into thinking that this is quite a complicated operation that we're about to do to create two matching shafts like this it's actually very straightforward so I'm going to show you the top level steps and then we'll jump straight into it let's hit delete to stop this simulation and we'll escape out of this simulation here. Let's just head over into PowerPoint to take a look at the top level steps to create some double shafts like we just saw. It's very straightforward, there's only six steps. Uh, let's have a look through. So you're going to create the first shaft as normal. In this case, we're creating a double threaded first shaft, which makes it a few more steps in there, and then save it. And then you need to take a copy of the first shaft. So you're going to do a save as to create the second shaft file. So at this point, we've got two shaft models, two IPT files that are exactly the same. And then you're going to open the generate form in the second shaft file. And then you've got a choice to make. Are your double shafts going to be rotating in opposite directions towards each other? Or are they going to be rotating in the same direction as each other? So if they're in opposite directions, you need to change the shaft rotation on the second shaft file, which makes sense. If they're rotating in the same direction, do not change the shaft rotation. Leave it left hand or right hand, whatever it was. So that's step number four. And then finally, whether or not the shafts are rotating in the opposite direction, you're going to switch the bottle rotation direction from one to the other. So if it was clockwise, you need to change it to anti-clockwise. If it was anti-clockwise, you need to change it to clockwise. That's obviously if you've got bottle rotation. If you don't have bottle rotation, then the job is even more simple. You can skip step five altogether. And then you just hit generate on the second shaft. And it really is that simple. Those are, those are the steps, so very straightforward. And when it comes to if you want to run a simulation and see a video or the movement of the bottles with both shafts present, for the simulation and the bottles relating to both shafts. There's simple tools in the simulation as well. We'll look at this later on in the video, but all you really need to do is open either one of the shaft models, either the, the left hand or the right hand one, and hit the simulate button, same as usual. And then inside the simulation, you need to hit the add shaft button in the form at the top and go and find the other shaft model to import it. And then once the second shaft is placed into the simulation, you may need to right click on the add second shaft button and just choose whether you've got shafts which are opposed in direction or identical rotation direction because the movement of the bottles and the shaft will be wrong if you pick the wrong one of these. So that relates to this choice up here, doesn't it? Whether the shafts are rotating opposite or the same direction. And it's as simple as that. Very, very straightforward in version five of the app. Last thing to say here as well is that you may have noticed we're not just having two shafts in this example but we have actually cut two threads on each shaft because we're rotating the bottles one way with one thread and the other way with the other thread. So if you want to refer back to tutorials 8 and 9, the two preceding ones to this one, that shows you nice and simply how you can use these tools, the operation tool to cut the first thread and then cut the second thread uh, changing the bottle rotation if you like if you want to refer to those that might help but we're going to cover that again in this video anyway okay let's start creating this double shaft from scratch here inside an empty part I'm going to hit generate and um, we'll start off with the left hand side of the double shaft so I'm going to change the shaft rotation to left-handed let's make the length a bit longer Diameter we had a 72.1, didn't we? This can be anything, of course, but we'll stick with that. And I'm going to bring in the bottles so that I can get a better idea of what it looks like. So let's uh, hit this Import 3D Solid. Let's choose 
choose an inventor part file and I'll bring this in here okay, that happens to have come in in the right orientation already but um, as you can see in tutorial number three uh, and 3.1 we can uh, we can change the orientation of that as much as we like to get it in the correct orientation but this is fine so I'm going to say OK to this here and there's our preview so we can go and start adjusting the bottle pitch so we're making this a slightly more interesting example by actually uh, as I mentioned creating a double thread on each shaft on the left hand and right hand shaft and referring back to um, tutorial number eight that means that we need to actually put double the pitch for each thread because of course we're going to have alternating threads uh, or the bottles are going to take alternating threads rather so we're going to need this to be much larger this thread here twice as large as it would need to be if the bottles were packed closely together so uh, this value because I've measured the bottle that's going to be 111 to give a gap for another bottle here and then the end pitch can really be whatever we like let's make that the 130 that we had in our example so the pitch is slightly more at the end but not hugely more at the end and then the lead in and lead out for that we would typically make that at least one revolution but I think in this example we'll just use these numbers that are close and then how far do we want to bury the bottle into the shaft here I'm going to actually put the bottle right on the outer diameter of the shaft here the center of the bottle that is rather and so the bottle will be completely buried in both shafts now you might think hang on won't this mean that the opposite shaft is going to be scraping against this shaft here if they're sharing the bottle equally well yes it would but in this case of course we are going to be putting another bottle here and that's going to be cutting away all this meat from the shaft so the actual shaft outer diameter will be somewhere around here the shafts won't be touching each other because these two bottles are so close together of course if we have the bottle pitched too far apart then we would need to extend uh, or move the bottles further out so we'd need to make this you know something like I don't know 80 or something like that so that the bottles positioned further away and the shafts don't scrape against each other let's move that back in this case to the same diameter as the shaft itself and now we do want bottle rotation just to make this example more interesting remember we're having alternate bottles rotating clockwise and then anti-clockwise so we we'll start the rotation at zero we'll end it at 90 of course as you've seen from the other tutorials we can enter any values in there that we want but let's enter the end rotation is 90 and then the lead in and lead out for those this is how far before the bottle starts rotating so i'll make it travel 180 millimeters before it starts rotating and then how far at the end after it stops rotating let's just say it's not going to stop rotating too far from the end there remember from the uh, tutorial number four we don't want to squash the rotation of the bottle into too small a space otherwise it rotates too fast and then we could introduce self intersecting construction geometry when we're trying to create the lofts for the shaft so we want to give the bottle plenty of time to rotate you can always make the shaft longer assuming your physical space allows for that right down to bottle oversize I didn't actually show any bottle oversize on the finished example I showed you a second ago but in the real world we would almost certainly want to add some clearance to the bottle to allow it to wiggle its way into between the shaft there so why don't we do that in this example I'm going to add a, a slight clearance of let's say maybe um, five millimeters at the start um, this kind of clearance at the start here and I'll quickly reduce that down to a one millimeter clearance or maybe let's say a two millimeter clearance here so maybe five maybe six millimeters down to two millimeters something like that you can check out tutorial number seven for a full guide on this uh, this bottle oversize of course we can't use the stretch bottle oversize see tutorial number seven because the bottles are rotating so I want the oversize to move to two millimeters reasonably quickly at the start of the shaft so shaft length is 600 so let's say by the time we're 100 150 millimeters along the shaft I want the clearance to only be two millimeters so let's say that we want that to be 450 millimeters 
so we want 450 millimeters of a two mil oversize so here's the five mil oversize here you can see this five mil oversize and it moves down to two mil oversize down here once the bottles have sort of are established in the shaft there okay uh, we're going to use a single face generation here generate a single helical face there rather than multiple helical faces and we shouldn't need a lot of loft profiles here we can probably leave it somewhere around this sort of lower range here because it's not a massively complicated uh, shaft that we're creating here and also we don't need a lot of loft rails let's put that down to uh, to make it create nice and fast and the accuracy will still be fine so let's save this file and we're ready to hit go Okay, so we've got our first thread cut on this left-handed part, on this left-handed shaft in uh, three minutes, just over three minutes. We do want to continue with another operation because of course we want to cut the second thread and rotate the bottles clockwise instead of anti-clockwise, counterclockwise. So we're going to use the tool that we uh, covered in tutorial number eight and nine, which is the ability to cut a second thread on the same shaft. So I'm going to turn on the second thread and we're going to use the not the trend not the offset the rotation um, by 180 degrees there and you can see the existing thread uh, or a preview of the existing thread a visualization of it gets rotated by 180 degrees so we can see that we're cutting the new helix the new thread um, in between the old thread here so that's the positioning of the second thread covered and we want to rotate the other way don't we of course you wouldn't need to worry about this if you weren't doing bottle rotation but that was anti-clockwise we're now going to switch that to clockwise to rotate the opposite way to the first thread and then because we don't want to change the the pitches or the position of the bottle with this one of course we could we can edit all of these values in here as well. We can even do a different bottle shape if we want just by uh, changing the bottle shape here or importing a new bottle solid, whether that makes sense uh, for the design or not. But because we've made all the changes here that we need to, we're just going to save this part and we'll hit generate again. Okay, that's the second thread cut in again just over three minutes. So I'll say uh, no, I don't want to continue with another operation here. Let's save this part. So it looks like, you know, we don't have a lot of engagement with the bottle here. Uh, this is just because of the design that we've produced. We're starting out with the oversize of five millimeters, aren't we? And going to an oversize, was it, of two millimeters at the end? I better hit generate here and run a simulation actually just to check. Uh, the movement of the bottles on this left hand version of the shaft before we copy it and create the right hand version of the shaft so let's hit simulate here okay and let's just drag the slider around just to double check the movement so that is doing what we told it to do isn't it it's uh, rotating one clockwise and one anti-clockwise alternately for the bottles isn't it Okay, so uh, I'm going to hit escape out of there. And uh, that's the left hand shaft complete. I'm going to save this file with a more sensible name. I'll call it left hand with oversize. Replace that existing one. And we'll cancel out of the form here. And we'll do a save as on this to our right hand shaft. So I'm going to do file save as. Let's call it right hand with oversize and hit save. And then we can just go hit generate again. And as we saw in the PowerPoint at the start of this tutorial, we just have really two values to change to start building this right hand version. So it's right hand here instead of left hand. And then we want to use the opposite rotation that we did last time so remember for the left hand shaft we started out with anti-clockwise and then the second thread was clockwise so this time we're going to do the other way around we're going to start off the first thread with clockwise and then do the second thread with anti-clockwise okay so that's all good to go 
and we can leave all the other settings exactly the same all the accuracy and all that kind of thing and we'll just hit generate that was an important message that I just skipped over there it said the existing solid body is going to be deleted there that's because by default up here in the in the form it says that um, we're going to cut the first thread so unless we tell it we want to cut a second thread or a new thread with each operation by default it will delete any existing finished solid bodies or finished shafts and cut a completely fresh new thread which is what it's going to do in this case which is exactly what we want it to do don't we because we want to delete off the, th the two threads that we cut for the left hand shaft that we just created because now we're creating the right hand threads okay so this is all good I'm going to speed the video up here as usual Okay, we've got the first thread cut there in three and a half minutes. We'll say yes, we do want to continue with another operation. And as, as before, we're just going to reverse the bottle rotation direction and say that we want to cut the second thread 180 degrees rotated from the first thread. Okay, so cut second thread 180 degrees um, rotated let's just hit enter and you see this preview move as we're rotating it 180 degrees and then switch the bottle rotation direction so that was clockwise it's now off and let's make it anti-clockwise okay and then we're good to go we might want to save the part first and let's hit generate here as before Okay, there's the second thread completed in just under four minutes. I'll say uh, that I do want to continue with another operation because I want to save this part and then I want to simulate this part and add the left-hand shaft to the simulation. So let's save and let's hit simulate. And this time, because we've got the opposite shaft to add, we can simulate both shafts together so this is a new feature added in version 5 of the app which is pretty handy for these kind of scenarios so here we go I can simulate this shaft as usual but then we can use this add second shaft option so I'm in the right hand shaft at the moment aren't I so I'll add the left hand shaft and say open okay and it's as easy as that we can now simulate these both together and we can run the uh, the playing of the video same as we did before so let's hit play here let the uh, 71 frames generate for this video okay let's hit delete to stop the video from playing okay as mentioned in the note a little earlier in the video we do have the option of creating double shafts where the movement of or the rotation of the shafts is not opposed is not opposite to each other but they actually rotate in the same direction and if you have created two shafts which are for instance both right hand or both left hand rotation then you can make the change here to make the simulation reflect that by right clicking on this button and at the moment we've got opposed shaft rotation if I switch it to identical in this case and then move this around you're going to see this is not what we wanted because of course we've got a right hand and a left hand shaft here but that option is there if you need it to use for identically rotating shafts okay so let's switch this back to make it opposed and there we go we've got the movement correctly set up now we can also see the um, clearance at the start here actually these bottles are quite difficult to see aren't they but if I set the color of these bottles to be maybe slightly different so that we can see them a bit more clearly that's not very helpful let's try a different color there we are then you can see the oversize starts from 5 mil and we put it down to 2 mil didn't we or 1 mil by a certain distance along the shaft so you can see that oversize has also been uh, respected here so we've got quite a lot of features into uh, a pair of shafts here hope you find this video very useful and thanks very much for watching